All right. Now, Olive Salad in Louisiana cooking is a vibrant and zesty melody of chopped green olives, black olives, pickled vegetables, and aromatic herbs, creating a bold and flavorful condiment. Well, what does all that mean? Well, right now, it is kind of a quintessential element in the iconic New Orleans sandwich, the muffalata. It adds a tangy and briny dimension to this classic dish. Now, problem is, making it yourself, the olive salad I'm talking about, is a time-consuming pain in the rear. But fear not, dear listener, we are going to introduce you to three ready-made olive salads from the Buscoli family and show you some insider tips on how you can use this awesome ingredient across multiple dishes. So, um, but that said, uh, before we get started, um, I wanted to thank Matt, Cindy, and uh, those guys are from, uh, and David from the Buscoli family for sending us all of these, I mean, olive salads our way. It, it's, uh, while we didn't have, we didn't have to review them or comment on them, we felt that, like these were worth talking about. So today we'll focus on the left three olive salads that you see on your screen right now. And then next week, we'll look in t- at the other line that highlights some of the rather unusual flavors. We'll make uh, a dish uh, from their recipe suggestions and then compare notes between David and myself. Um, speaking of David, he is in the green room. Uh, let's bring him in. David, how's it going, man? Hey, it's good. good. I'm looking forward to trying olive salad. Been trying, uh, been thinking about this episode for probably a couple of weeks now. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting thing. Um, I think one of the things that turned me off to the muffalata when I was younger was the fact that it had olive salad on it. And um, I, you know, from a personal standpoint, I never really saw the appeal in it, and I never really cared about olives. Now, um, which you know, as time grew on, as maybe you want to say, my palate matured. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Napa when I lived in the San Francisco Bay Area, and they always had like the little olive tapenades and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'll give it a try. But a tapenade is way different. It's kind of the origins of the olive salad. I would think it's a Mediterranean dish, uh, but the the olives are pureed more than what you have inside the olive salad. Um, so yeah, it, it, as time went on, I started to try it and then it wasn't really until I opened our restaurant that I had my first muffalata in a very long time. And, uh, it was awesome. I mean, it was just absolutely awesome. And so I think my palate has come around, but it's still odd. Like last night we got pizza for the family and uh, they got the order wrong for me. And uh, it turns out that um, all the pizzas had olives on them. And I picked all the oh. olives off. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's kind of weird that way, right? It, it's, you know, yeah. I'll eat I'll eat tomato, you know, meat sauce and tomato with right. spaghetti. But I won't eat tomatoes. You know, it's just, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's Maybe it's a texture thing. Maybe it's... The flavor concentration, the flavor profile being different in tomato sauce versus yeah. like a raw tomato. I'm not really sure, but I'm. Uh, my mother would be the first one to tell you that I'm a very picky eater. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I was trying to think of when I started eating olives. To be honest with you, because as you're ta- telling your history of it, I'm thinking back that I mean we had some olives that we ate as a kid. Yeah, uh, my parents would eat, but. You know, it's not like they drank martinis or anything. Right. And um, so I'm not, I think the first time I really had it is, would have been two places. It would have been either on a muffalata yeah. or it might have been on a pizza. Um, it would have been black olives for pizzas, what my mom would usually do. And uh, obviously, I think probably it was the early 80s when I had my first muffalata. But she made olive salad from scratch a couple of times. Your mom so did. I'm, yeah. She's, oh, okay. She had a recipe when she worked with, uh, I think she worked with Daryl DeMoss Photography back in the 60s. And uh, she had an, uh, either an Italian or Sicilian co-worker. 
and this woman shared with her the family recipe and so she would make it uh from scratch uh, <laughs> about three times and uh and so that's the only time we really had it and it wasn't until you could get the products like we're talking about today yeah that we really had more accessibility to doing a muffalata on our own right so that but- that was uh, pretty exciting well, and you know that the I think really the first place to commercialize it was the inventor of the muffalata was Central Grocery in New Orleans, yeah. right? And yeah. like like we said in our muffalata episode, it's kind of interesting that the muffalata was invented by a Sicilian uh, that includes Italian ingredients and then technically originated in New Orleans. So it yeah. it is a very uh, We'll call it a uh, cultural fluid food, um, yeah. and so you know the the with with Central Grocery doing their thing. Um, I, I actually looked up the history of Buscoli, and they started the year after I graduated high school, which either makes them really young or me really old. <laughs> but, I, I, think, I think they're really young. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's what I got this guy for. <laughs> um, so, you know, the, uh, the, what's, what's happened is uh, n- now with uh, with Pascoli and, and this, you know, Gambino's has some as well. Um, and of course, the episode that I did with uh, Muffaladas, I'd used the Trader Joe's uh, olive salad. And after having like Pascoli, it was like, okay, this is night and day difference. I mean, it really is. Yeah. And it's no knock on Trader Joe's, it's Trader Joe's. But this is, is about as authentic as you're going to get. Um, and, and if you look at the ingredients, it's it's fairly straightforward. Um, we'll go through each one of these that I've got here. But uh, there's, um, I noticed there's, oh no, there is nutritional information on here. Of course, they make it, they, they make it, uh, God, my wife couldn't even read this. Sorry if you're listening right now, honey. But um, yeah, I can barely read it. Um, but anyway, uh, it, you know, it's pretty simple. It's it's olives, yeah. it's olive oil and veggies and some spices. Yeah, yeah um, you know, talking about the history, like we were look, looking at before, uh, you know, the muffalata is a the bread is where or where it gets its name from the loaf. And yeah, New Orleans is actually the originator because there's not a muffalata sandwich in Sicily or in Italy, um, right? You don't find that, and you, as you talked about in that episode, you, which you probably link back to, you, we talked about the history. I mean, the uh, the central grocery store owner, uh, you know, was serving all those things individually, and right? So, and he, he and he could see the farmers and the merchants trying to eat them on barrels or something, and eat the meat and eat the olive salad and eat the bread, right? And just uh, ingeniously put it together onto one sandwich, and it, it obviously caught on, um, but. To your point, too, about the jar uh, making it, when I was also looking back to try to find any old recipes listed in, say, newspapers, yeah. I couldn't find anything that I found references to olive salad, like making your own. Yeah. I did not see, um, and I did see some places that maybe sold it, but I'm thinking kind of like, I bet you if you went to Central Grocery back 1906 or 1920 or something, if you wanted to take olive salad home, you'd probably get it in a container and and bring it to the house and right it wasn't like it was jarred and convenient i mean it was convenient if you were in the neighborhood but it wasn't like something that you could keep and bring with you and in fact right. rouse's has like an olive bar at the various ones here in mobile right I'm sure it was something like that where you could probably have access to it but it wasn't as convenient as what we have today with Pascali. right and and i think for the muffalata episode you did didn't you use rouse's olive salad for that you yeah. did. Okay. So, of course, you've gotten a chance to maybe sample the goods a little bit prior to the show today. Um, mm-hmm. The only one I haven't tried is the one you made the the uh, the dip with was the Kalamata. So I'm really curious to try that. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's, uh, you know, the product itself, it says refrigerate after opening. I... I 
I guess it can go bad. It can oxidize. I guess that's the the thing that's the problem. Uh, I can't imagine it being a, a haven for bacteria growth. But then again, I'm not a you know I'm not a chemist uh, <clears throat> as uh, somebody is <laughs> in this family. Um, so chemical engineer. A chemical engineer. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> there's a difference. <laughs> Well, uh, I would think that to a certain extent, I mean, you know, your your air, uh, your heat and all, and any type of organics that get into the olive oil itself is what could make it go bad. Right. Um, I mean, I think, and but then, you know, they talk about olive oil in general, if you keep it, you want to keep it in a cool, dark spot. Right. Um, and, and if you read the, the purist, it, you know, you're not really supposed to keep it for several days or several weeks. So right. I believe you're right. It's the oxidation and then the heat breakdown of the light, actually. Right. Even that's so much heat. But, uh, you know, you got to think that back when uh, Central Grocery and other places in the in the French Quarter were having their barrels of the olive oils or even the olives being shipped across, maybe I guess they were brined in that day. So they had a bit of salt to preserve them to begin with. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, you got to imagine that unless the product was just moving that fast, that you know it couldn't have been refrigerated well until probably the 1950s or 1940s in new orleans right i mean new orleans and as you know and most of the viewers hopefully know is uh you know like with the right uh, very top of the i guess what they call it the caribbean or uh i mean it's hot and humid tropical right uh, right semi-tropical so uh obviously even if it didn't get refrigerated uh you didn't hear about vast uh olive oil uh deaths in the, in, right, in exactly. the early days yeah <laughs> the um, olive oil plague of the 1900s you know <laughs> right right yeah so i mean i think a lot of things you know it probably uh preserves it a little bit better to keep it cold sure uh, it re- reduces any type of bacteria but uh especially the size jars that uh we're sampling i mean i don't see uh if you get a good gathering of folks you probably use a 16 ounce jar and not have to worry about any leftovers. Right. That's true. Uh, yeah, I was actually kind of surprised how quickly I was going through mine. I've already gone through one and a half jars of that stuff. And this was yeah. with me already having two jars to start with. So I, this will be the first time I'm actually opening one of the jars that they sent us. Um, yeah. And, uh, but I don't see anything on there about, you know, shelf life or i mean i do see best yeah, buy yeah it's best buy uh this one's not until 2025 so we basically yeah. got two years of shelf life yeah. with this yeah um, i mean that's an open an open shelf life um, correct correct yeah but you know it's so and here like i i can do this because uh getting old i need readers um yeah there's no cholesterol at all uh there's it's really low in carbs it's only five grams of carbs and um so it's got dietary fiber so that brings it down to four so and there's no sugars at all of course there's no protein uh i i i'm failing to see well it's a lot of fat uh, well, no, not really. I mean, for the in the grand scheme of things, um, this is a relatively innocuous um, condiment. You know, I, yeah, that's I don't. Fat too. I mean, olive oil's right. always been something everybody's been pushing for decades. Right. At least since you and I have been alive, um, as being one of the healthier oils to use. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I. I, I I don't see the downside of, uh, well, there probably is from eating too much of anything, uh, sure. over consuming it, but there's probably a lot of other condiments that are out there that probably aren't as good for you as this is. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, it, okay. So maybe a little bit on the sodium side, there's like, uh, I think that says 290 milligrams. And I want to say that for daily allowance is, uh, 2500 or somewhere around there um so that could be the only thing yeah okay so this is one serving is 12 percent of your daily yeah allowance so 
I mean, that's a lot. Uh, the, the, the serving size here is one tablespoon, which that's a really a couple of crackers worth or, you know, a bruschetta worth of, uh, yeah. Of, uh, sodium. So it's not that, not that bad. Um, certainly when you put it on a muffalata, it's probably the least, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, yeah, from a health standpoint, the the least the last thing you have to worry about. So, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it's just looking at it. I, we watch this one show, and they go through all the calories and stuff like seventy calories. I mean, it's like Jesus, that's nothing. Um, yeah. So, uh, I think from a health standpoint, this you, you know, you just watch your intake of sodium with it and. You're good to go. Everything else is kind of it's in the green, or it's not even registering on the on yeah. the nutritional levels. So I'd be curious to see what the other ones were. That, but I, I'm assuming that they're all roughly the same as far as uh, you know, like. Yeah, I, um, think, I mean, I think that what you're talking about is, as we talked about before, is that. You know, now you and I have been probably indulging in this way more than we, than we have in the last uh, yeah twenty years, years. yeah yeah uh, in the last month. Um, so, but you know, t- typically, like I said, when we eat uh, the muffalata, we'll do it around um, right a Mardi Gras night, and then right. maybe have one more. Uh, another thing that's real popular that we used to make uh, is the restaurant Semolina's had the muffalata pasta. Where you basically deconstruct mm. all of that, and you have your olive salad and the the meat and the and the provolone over some sort of maybe like penne pasta, yep. And you, you just have that, and so it's kind of spread out, and it's probably not as well. You probably have more of the carbs there, yeah, because of the recipe. pasta. But yeah, yeah. But yeah. as far as um, you know, but as far as using it in, in things, you know, even if I had it on a sandwich once a week, I don't think I would worry about it too much i mean no as long as i'm not eating the full nine inch muffalata i'm (laughs) I'm good if i'm just having it as you know spooning it on a half a sandwich or something i don't think it's gonna be a problem no no and and really you don't a a little goes a long way with this stuff because it's got so much flavor to it um you really don't have to um put a lot on anything to get uh to get that those flavors so uh, speaking of which, yeah. um, why don't we dive in a little bit here? Um, yeah. So I get to try first. Uh, just the regular one, I think. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. So this, uh, I've got my special Zoom camera here today. Okay. So this is the, this is their, um, just the they call it Italian olive salad, uh, but that is very much, um, you know, the stuff that goes on muffalatos traditionally. So. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, um, when I was growing up, I would, uh, I'd stay over at my cousin's house with my other cousin, uh, Mark, and, uh, we'd spend the night and I would go through sleeves of saltine crackers, um, when, when I stayed over. So last night I went to the grocery store. And I got four sleeves of saltine crackers, which I have not had in decades. So I figured that this is a good platform. Now, I hope you brought like a... Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Very quickly, I oil... Like something. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> this stuff, it once it gets on something, it gets on your hands. And uh, yeah, so uh, it it's a from a handling standpoint it's like whoa okay right i'm not getting away with any crimes i'm going to leave fingerprints all over the place all right so this is the first one this is the italian yep all right so this one just looks like a traditional mixture uh Looks like predominantly green olives, carrots, cauliflower. Yep, I just dripped too. Damn it. Now, if I just change the rating on our show <laughs> for this week. 
Um, this is not for kids. Um, so that, let me go back to my zoom camera here because I can do this a little bit more easily. Oh, there we go. So that's what I put on there. So you can see the the um, the olives, the cauliflower, carrots, and of course, uh, plenty of olive oil. Yeah, well, like we said, it's about uh, the traditional one is supposed to be about ten percent olive oil to salads or mm -hmm. veggies. Um, so what I'm telling, what I'm thinking here, given the fact that we've tried some others recently, right. And I, even I'm thinking back over memories from the last several years uh, for some of the other major brands that are available out there. Some of the original brands out there, let me say. Um, I find this to be better balanced. I don't find it very salty. Um, my Mine is, uh, I've had some that have, to me, have been way saltier. And to yeah. me, this one is, is very, I don't think my, my palate's gotten to the point where can't discern it i just think that it, it tastes a lot better um from a standpoint of just it doesn't hit you like some saltiness does of other things i think this one is uh you know when you put it on a muffalata like you talked about uh, you put it you put it on and let it kind of soak in uh, right but oftentimes what i'll do is i'll even drain the excess oil sure off of there um so i i i find this one really good and uh and well balanced i hate to keep using that word but um i know that uh listening to interviews uh with the founders that uh a lot of restaurants actually use this as well use this brand brand yeah and around new orleans so um that is uh you know good testament there as well sure because it can be used uh in a lot of different um dishes well and that was the whole point of this episode was i mean we've already talked about using this in in a muffalata which is kind of a a standard right, right. but to taste these kind of by themselves on mm -hmm. what i call a, a neutral platform um it, it allows you to kind of pick out flavors that you might like or might not like and um, and decide how you might be able to use that. Because I don't, you know, obviously I'm not going to eat muffaladas every day like you were saying. Right. I, I, I would find my way quickly to go into Costco to buy a coffin. Um, but the... the uh, the ability to use it like we did, you know, and we'll right. we'll cover that in the, at the end. There is the uh, the dip. Um, this gives me ideas for how else to be able to use it, and right. and the recipe card that they gave us in the box, which is basically duplicated on their website, um, gives you some really good ideas. Yep, that that's it right there. I would hold mine up, but it's full of oil now, so. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a little bit ahead of you. I'm going to the Kalamata. Okay. Um, yeah. And I and did this, sample that, this one earlier, but I'm going to sample it again. Okay. And this one, um, you can see there's uh, some black olives in there. So it's a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, a lot of olives there. Yeah. So <laughs> I just. <laughs> okay. Note to self, protect against all olive oil and on your electronics before you do an episode on it. Okay, so... Put down the whiskey. So the other thing I was thinking with these would be uh, nowadays, <laughs> charcuterie boards are so popular. Oh, yeah. And so I could see you, you know, draining it some and having uh, three little jars or bowls, let me say, uh, that you can have as part of a charcuterie board, especially if right. you wanted to do a a New Orleans style, um, maybe some of the meats um, and and foods down there. So yeah, you could do that. It doesn't have to be a New Orleans style, but you know, just thinking about it. Well, they all kind of go together, right? Make your own muffalata. You could have like two little crostinis and then the meats, and then 
the cheeses and then the olive salad and you just kind of make your own right i like this calamata it's got a um it's definitely a different flavor than the original italian olive salad <clears throat> it's hard to pin point exactly what it is but i feel like it's a richer flavor um and that's probably brought on by the calamata of calamata of olives calamatas yeah. um and but i like I, it i noticed i noticed that too and i'm thinking next time i make a muffle lot of i'm gonna go with the calamata yeah i mean because well before you make that decision we got next week too well yeah i know that i realize that <laughs> i'll probably hold off having any more muffle lot of that you, don't know. <laughs> you never know the, uh, but no i agree with you um because this is the first time I've ever tried anything other than the traditional Italian. Now, right. Uh, there was a bakery in Mobile. I may have told the story when we were talking about Mufaladas uh, uh, probably 25 years ago. I was looking around. I had a hankering for a Mufalada. Actually, one of the first things we had when we moved to Mobile, there was a bakery. When this gentleman's passed on, he had a, I think he was from New York, but he actually had a New Orleans-style bakery. And it was called Tony L's. And... He had muffaladas. Now, he didn't have it on muffalata bread. He had it on kind of like a po' boy, but loaf. But he was one of the few people that I have ever come across who could duplicate a New Orleans-style bread outside of New Orleans. And so we had hit. We had, it was one of the first things we had. And um, it actually was very salty, his, his olive salad was. And then fast forward 10, 12 years in the future, we were looking for some. And there's a place called uh, Food Pack that's around. It's a Mediterranean type place. And they do a very good job, but their olive salad's a little different and it actually has more of a, I guess more of the traditional Mediterranean flavors, say, than maybe a Sicilian or Italian uh, would have. Right. Um, the one that was really, the, I say odd, that was most different was one at a bakery and it was all black olives. It was a black olive salad. Huh. And um, it was decent, yeah. It, but it wasn't what I would uh, say was in the same vein. So for the most part, I've had the traditional uh, New Orleans style, right? Uh, but but to me, this is the first one that I've had that's kind of in made by people from Louisiana, and uh, it's different. But I, I do, I really do like it. Yeah, I do too. I mean. Uh... I know that uh, the missus wanted to try that as well, um, so um, we'll definitely try and make something with it. Um, the The dipping sauce that I made, to, or dipping the dip that I made today, does not have it's it's what I'm about to sample next, which um, I like, and um, yeah, I've not tried this. Yeah, okay, so this is um, this is the jalapeno, Yeah. and you would think that there's a ton of heat on this one, and there is some, but it's not, it's more of the flavor of the jalapeno that you get than the heat, at least for me. Maybe I'm used to it, um, but this looks... This looks more, a lot more like the the Italian, the, the original uh, muffalata or the olive salad <clears throat> that they use on muffaladas. But you can see here, it you know it's got a lot more color to it. Um, but and then it just dripped again. Um, <laughs> I think I'd learned by now. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna. I'm going to put a napkin over that control box so that I can actually press buttons and end the show when I want to end the show. Before I was ending the show when I didn't want to, and that was mainly my fat fingers, not olive oil. We should get like one of those plastic bibs that they serve you like when you get barbecue shrimp in New Orleans. Just have it. Just wear yeah, black kinda, like me. Yeah. Well, I've been <laughs> kind of... Uh, I've seen their uh, Scully's brand and... Um, Rouse's brand of this, and I've been kind of shying away from it because, I mean, I don't mind hot stuff. The rest of my family doesn't care for it, right? But uh, I'm kind of intrigued to see because I've seen it 
Uh, it's been around for a while. So um, here it goes. Go for it, man. Make sure I, I'm trying to make sure I don't spill anything. <laughs> I know I'm going to have to get out the Clorox wipes after the show's over. You're going to get, at least for me, I mean, I'm not going to tell you what you're going to taste, but you will get the heat on the back end. Yeah. I, I got it, but it's not bad. It's uh-uh. not, for me, I mean, and even though I'm accused by some of the family of putting a little too much pepper on some stuff, <laughs> I don't really uh, like to over pepper things. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but this one has a nice hot, hot peppery finish, but not, not something that's not... I mean, if it was really bad, I'd be going to get some milk or something. And <laughs> no, um, it's not offensive at all. It's it's no. very very. I, it, you know, it's 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 palatable. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, I like it, and and this is what I based my dip on was a jalapeno. Um, but that <clears throat> for me, you do unlike the other two, where you know, so if you had the. Ita- the uh, Italian olive soil, the uh, so- olive oil. Soil. Uh-huh. <laughs> Woo. All right. Um, and I haven't been drinking anything but water and uh, maybe it was a jalapeno olive salad. Um, but maybe the original, what you would use on a muffalata is kind of a baseline and then the calamata being richer. But then this has got, you do have the jalapeno flavors in this right i mean it's of course you got the heat but you've got the flavor of the jalapeno and so the texture of the i guess it's a pickled jalapeno too yeah plus um the olives um yeah i mean i could get behind this this is uh yeah this is good stuff i think that's an excellent example or analogy that you have there is the, the jalapeno a lot of people like pickled jalapenos, so if I had a jar of pickled jalapenos, I actually think they're hotter than what I'm having here. Right. If you had a, a muted version of it and you mix it with your olive salad, just for people who are trying to get their mind around it, that's kind of what I would say it's analogous to is having, you know, throwing a, and it wouldn't even be 50-50. Right. I might say maybe if you took a quarter of a teaspoon of, or a tablespoon of uh, pickled jalapenos and you chopped it up and you add it to a, a tablespoon of regular olive salad that's kind of what you would expect to have that kind of the olive salad flavors right. but the uh, the strong finish of the jalapeno and when I mean strong not like but strong is in right you know you've had a jalapeno yeah it's just not like I said it's not offensive it's 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 there and it makes its presence known, but it's not something like it's not like watching an episode of the Hot Ones where the guests want to actually clobber the guy for giving them that certain <laughs> hot sauce that you know, they start crying and stuff like that. It's not like right. that at all. Um, it's very, it's very. No, I most kids probably wouldn't go for it, but I think most refined uh, palates, especially when it came to people who appreciated olive salad, would like this. It's it's a good right. departure. And I think that your use of it in this dip that we're going to tell everybody about yeah. is a perfect one because that will also help cut any the heat, heat yeah. that anybody might perceive having with it. Right, um, right. But I think the uh, Oscoli family did a really good job with these. I mean, yeah. I, I, I would not hesitate to uh, recommend them to everybody. And once again, all of these to me are not very salty. They're, no, they're seasoned well and yep. well balanced. Yep. Um, so I, mean, I appreciate the opportunity for them to let us try them and, and all. So I can't wait to try the other ones next week too. Yeah, the next next week's going to be an interesting one, and we're not teasing that on purpose. Well, maybe a little bit, but uh, that's. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> I I mean, there's some there's some flavors in there. It's like you can rewind the episode and you can see what's on the table there. I'm not going to talk about them anymore, but I did want to, before we, uh, we wrap it and we go to the, the live after party after show. Um, so we, uh, we're, 
we use the Bascali party dip uh, <clears throat> recipe that came with um, their box. And uh, really, this is a very simple recipe. It's um, one block of cream cheese and equal parts of uh, olive salad. So if you're doing eight ounces, which is a block of that cream cheese and eight ounces, yeah. the only problem is, is that the Bascali stuff is uh, 15 and a half ounces. So you have to eyeball a half ounce somehow, yeah. right? You can't take yeah. just half the jar, yeah. um, but that's okay. <clears throat> but, you know, we went to school for that kind of stuff, right? Um, so uh, this is, uh, I'll put the zoom camera on and you can see this is the the recipe right here. Uh, it's a crappy view. Ah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I got a video I'll show yeah. later. Uh, and I'm gonna—I actually have it queued up, so um, I'll I'll let people watch that. Yeah, and the video has the video. We'll we'll take a look at real quick here before we taste it. Um, but you can see that's what it looks like, and you know with. Um, with the holiday season coming around dips you know it's kind of a thing right and uh yeah. so being able to create something that's kind of unique like this i think is uh it's pretty yeah. killer you know yeah that's exactly what you said <laughs> you said it right before i i was thinking the same thing as you were saying it that you know this is going to be a good dip that uh, anybody you know when i know in our family and all we'd get together we would always kind of uh pick on stuff beforehand Right. And so, uh, and so, uh, that would, to me, would be something that is, you know, if your cooking skills aren't all that, uh, well honed <laughs> and you want to bring something to a gathering. Yeah. This is something that's really easy to put together and everybody will be impressed with it. Exactly. And, uh, and, you know, there's a dish actually or a little appetizer my wife makes. And I don't know if she got it from like a, um, what do they call those, uh, those like kitchen type of parties that they would throw, but it would be like a, uh, a pampered chef or something like that. Uh, okay. it was like a tor tortilla with a cream cheese and black olive and green onion mixture that and you kind of roll it up and you cut it in pinwheels. And I think you can actually buy these pinwheels at your big box stores. Yeah. But me, I would go ahead and mix this up. And if you're not going to use it as a dip, you could put it in, uh, that roll it up. And you can make these uh, unique pinwheels here. Yeah, well, totally. I mean, it's a th there's that's the thing is that there's a lot of th the diversity of this as a condiment means that you can use it so many different ways. But I mean, I think we probably chose the easiest way. But it, you know, it's it really is. You, you, you're draining the olive salad right there, um, yeah. and then uh, you're you know tossing in the cream cheese. And then a uh, food processor and what? Five seconds, and, maybe? Yeah. A couple of bursts. I mean, yeah, just well well mixed, as you see there. Yeah, yeah. I think mine turned out a little bit drier and a little bit lumpier, I think. But I was eyeballing things, and sometimes I can, uh, I can uh, do things that are maybe not... I eyeballed it incorrectly, I guess, the best way to put it. Um, all right, cool. Well, let's give this a taste then. Um, so you have the yeah. Kalamata uh, olive salad as yep. your dip, right? And I did jalapeno. So, and I would be remiss if I didn't show it. Let me go back to my zoom camera here. That's what mine looks like. And we saw what yeah. yours looks like in the video. Um, nice to have the uh, green onions, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it was kind of one of those things. It was like, Last night we were at the grocery store and I, was, and I was talking to my wife. I'm like, they're not expensive, right? She goes, no, just you know. <laughs> so I was like, it's more of a, it's more of a, garnish. a garnish. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. So, all right, cool. Let's dig in. All right. And this, uh, oh man, this, yeah. This could totally be a spread on a bagel. Yeah. Um, so the other thing is, I made it earlier this morning, and it's had a while to, to sit. Kind of set, yeah. And, 
and I think that it, it's even better now than it was before. Yeah, yeah. I, to me, to me, you could. Do, this is going to have to be on people's Christmas and Thanksgiving tables or get-togethers. Uh, hey, I mean, people are doing uh, office parties. Yeah, be the popular person that brings the, uh, the cream cheese olive salad dip. Yeah, and you know, <clears throat> and I and I kind of stress to people I, I, when we did the muffalata episode, and I was talking to some folks about the what is a muffalata. Um, a lot of them said, "Oh, I don't like olives." I said, "You know what? I didn't like olives either, but." Mm-hmm. Give it a try. Don't try it like you think you're, you know, like you're traditionally eating olives. And this is, would be a perfect introduction to an olive salad because yep. it it has the texture, it has the flavor, and they know what cream cheese tastes like. So, right, yeah, yeah. I like this. This oh, is, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I, I got like one, I got two, four, six, I got eight crackers to last me for the. <laughs> <laughs> the after show, so um, I got about so. three. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, if you get, if you have to get up and go get some, I won't hold it against you. <laughs> I got a spoon too, so I just may just count on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and wrap this. Um, so let's see here. So. Uh, couple of things a uh, little bit of a programming note um i think what what dave and i had discussed is that i think what we're going to do is we're going to have these kind of tight format shows where we just and these are internal notes but i figured we you know we'll share them with you just to keep the episode nice and tight and relevant and then um the kind of banter back and forth and kind of shooting the breeze we'll do in the after show but we were doing the after show just audio only now we're going to do it on youtube live so you'll be able to see us and um and actually ask questions which you can you can do during the regular show it's just sometimes hard to answer if we're in the middle of talking about something so um i'm going to have my laptop open and if you have questions or comments or, you know, uh, whatever it is, if you want to chat about it, you can just hop on online. Um, but it, this will be YouTube only. So if you're watching via Facebook, um, mm-hmm. you'll need to go over to the YouTube channel, which is just do a search on Rainy Cajun inside YouTube and then subscribe. And if you subscribe in YouTube, you know, the whole like and subscribe thing. There's a reason for that. Well, first of all, it helps us. But secondly, when we have new episodes, when we have new content, um, you will see that pop up. And uh, it's just an easier way to, to find us, And when we, especially when we have new stuff. Um, so that's, that's going to happen maybe two minutes or so after we wrap up here. And, uh, and so for those of you who are watching, you're more than welcome to join us. Otherwise it'll be what David and I have been doing for the past couple of weeks, just kind of talking. So, um, yeah. but we'd love to have you. And this is your opportunity to kind of, uh, shoot some questions our way. So until then, thanks for watching everybody. We really appreciate it. Um, and we'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>